Hello. In this week's Torah portion, Teuma, God begins to give very detailed instructions on how the Israelites are to build a tabernacle for him. It's a portable sanctuary, in Hebrew, Mishkan, the prototype of the future temple of Beth Hamikdash. Quote, and let them make for me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. You shall make it exactly as I showed, unquote. These instructions stretch over many Torah portions. The Mishkan is to be God's dwelling place when he chooses to come down among the people. The Shekhinah, or divine presence, comes from the same root as Mishkan, Shin Kaf Nun. The Midrash notes that there are clear parallels between the creation of the worlds and the building of the Mishkan. Quote, on the first day, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it says, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. And regarding the Mishkan, what does it say? And you shall make curtains of goats for a tent over the tabernacle. There is a curtain in both places. On the second day, it says, let there be a firmament, and it mentions division, as it is said, and let it divide water from water. And regarding the Mishkan, it says, and the veil shall divide for you between the holy and the holy of holies. There's a division in both places. On the third day, it mentions water, as it says, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together. And regarding the Mishkan, it says, and you shall make a copper basin with a base of copper for washing. There's water in both places. On the fourth day, God created the lights, as it says, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven. And regarding the Mishkan, it says, and you shall make a candlestick of pure gold. There are lights in both places. On the fifth day, he created the birds, as it stated, let the waters swarm abundantly with moving creatures that have life and let birds fly above the earth. And corresponding to them in the Mishkan, the Kerubim shall spread out their wings upwards. There are flying creatures in both places. On the sixth day, man was created, as it says, so God created man in his own image. And regarding the Mishkan, it says, bring near Aaron, your brother, the high priest, to perform the service in the sanctuary. There's a man in both places. On the seventh day, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And regarding the Mishkan, it says, and all the work was finished. The ending is marked in both places. Regarding the creation of the world, it says, and God blessed them. And regarding the Mishkan, it says, and Moses blessed them. There's a blessing in both places. Regarding the creation of the world, it says, and God had finished the work. And regarding the Mishkan, it says, and it happened on the day that it was finished. There's finishing in both places. Regarding the creation of the world, it says, and he sanctified it. And, reg and regarding the Mishkan, it says, and Moses anointed it and sanctified it. There is sanctification in both places. Other parallels have to do with the Garden of Eden. They are not included in the Midrash, possibly because the sojourn in the Garden of Eden did not have a happy ending. God says to the prophet Ezekiel, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your adornment, carnelian, chrysolite, and amethyst, beryl, lapis lazuli, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emeralds, and gold. The precious stones are included in the making of the breastplate of the, heart of, of, of the high priests. The cherubim stood guard at the entrance of the garden of Eden. The Mishkan included cherubim, quote, make two cherubim of gold at the two ends of the cover. Adam's responsibility in the Garden of Eden is to work it and keep it. The priests are told to take care of the Mishkan using the same verbs. Why these parallels? Many reasons have been advanced. The creation was God making space for people. The Mishkan was people making space for God. The world began with an act of creation. The history of the Jews as a free people also began with an act of creation, the building of the Mishkan. God and people are partners in the creation and maintenance of the world. As God can create, so can people. What's easy for God is difficult for people. The creation of a vast universe by God for people took only 34 verses in the Torah. 
the building by people of a relatively tiny abode for God took hundreds of verses in five Torah portions. From a mystical point of view, the Kabbalah introduces the idea of tzimtzum, which literally means constriction. It teaches that God constricted his infinite essence to create an independent world. This constriction made free will possible and allowed people to earn their entry in the world to come. He decided not to be ubiquitous, making only sporadic contacts, reserving specific times and places for himself. The times would be Shabbat and the holy days, the space would be the Mishkan, the temple, and the synagogues. Then and there, the people must limit themselves, stop creating, make room for God, just as God limited himself to make room for them. Simsum seems to be quantum mechanics by another name. I'm a physicist. After the creation, the Torah says, and God saw that all that he had made, so all that he had made and behold, it was very good. After the Mishkan was completed, the Torah says, Moses saw all the work and behold, they had done it. As God commanded it, they had done it. And Moses blessed them. Moses approved on behalf of God as it were. In the Midrash, Rebbe Meir says that Moses blessed them by saying, quote, may it be God's will that the Shekhinah come to rest upon the work of your hands. Or Hayim writes that the word behold in both places is a tribute to the speed of delivery. The Midrash notes that it says, and Moses saw all the work, not and Moses saw all the work of the Mishkan, to imply that the work of the Mishkan was the full equivalent of the work of creation. In conclusion, the making of the Mishkan clearly parallels the creation of the worlds. Just as God made space for people, so people made space for God. God and people are partners in the creation and maintenance of the worlds. As God can create, so can people. Shabbat Shalom.